Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I am going to share with you guys how I made my oldest daughter's birthday card. She turned 13 last week and I feel really old. And yeah, I made the super fun full size shaker card for her and I started off with a whole bunch of die cutting. I have a whole bunch of different dynamics sets from My Favorite Things and I started out with the inside note stitched rectangle stacks dynamics and I used the largest die from that set and die cut two pieces of white cardstock and then I'm die cutting some scraps of a couple different colors of cardstock. I used ripe raspberry and tropical teal cardstock and various dynamics dies. I will have them all listed in the description box as well as on my blog. Um, but I used the big numbers dies. I used the smartphone dynamics. That was kind of the main one. Um, I used the Emmet alphabet, happy dynamics, the arrow greetings, and the bottle cap letters. I'm pretty sure that was all of them um, from the various card stocks. And then I have this um, kind of shimmery, it's not even really shimmery cardstock. Um, it's by Basil and I've had it in my stash for a while, but it's Basil Pearl Foil cardstock. Um, really, really pretty, but I immediately was thinking like, since I was doing a cell phone, um, that that would work perfectly for it. So I die cut, um, just a little piece of that. And then I die cut those sentiments and then I die cut the rest of um, the dies from the smartphone um, dynamics. Again, all from various scraps of cardstock. This is why I um, keep all my scraps. I don't toss them out because I use them. They're perfect for this rather than cutting into full sheets of cardstock. So once I did that, I decided um, on the newer phones, there's this kind of cool bokeh background. I have it on my own phone, you know, and it, it moves and it's really, really pretty. So that kind of inspired me for this one. So I die cut the black cardstock with the die and then I grabbed MFT's bokeh builder stamp set. And since it's black cardstock, um, I'm using pigment inks here. And these are MFT's Sweet Tooth, Tropical, Teal, and um, Ripe Raspberry Pigment Inks. And just as an FYI, mine are not um, as pigmented, I guess I should say. But these were the original release of pigment inks way back when they first came out with them. And it was a manufacturer, um, like defect type thing. They replaced them all. And the new ones are really, really nice. I just, I don't have any of the new ones. I still have all these old ink pads and I can make them work. <laughs> That's what I've been doing. So the colors went with the cardstock, obviously. So I use those and I just stamp them all over that black piece of cardstock and sometimes stamp them off. You can say it's stamped it off onto the grid paper first to create, you know, lighter and darker versions of it and this whole fun little bokeh effect. And then I took the little die cut speech bubbles that I had die cut in the beginning and I coated them all with anti-static powder. And this cuts out in a second. Um, my camera batter, either it died or I don't know what happened, but I lost like this part, the remaining footage of this part. But I just stamped the sentiments from the coordinating um, friend request stamp set with the Sweet Tooth Penguin ink and then coated them all with um, white detail embossing powder and embossed them. And then I took all the little die cuts I had, all the remaining ones, and I put them face down into this box I always keep. And I stepped outside and sprayed them all with spray adhesive because I had so many die cuts. It was just so much faster this way rather than coating each die cut with adhesive. And I always, I still forget I have um, the sticky sheet adhesive that I could have coated all the backs of these with before I even started, but old habits die hard. So... I had them all coated with adhesive and then I just use my tweezers to pick up each um, die cut to adhere because they're super, super sticky from that spray adhesive. And I created this whole sentiment um, on the one large um, stitched rectangle dynamics that I had die cut in the beginning. So I spelled out happy 13th birthday, Veronica. That's something I love to do with my kids' cards is personalize it with their name. Um, I've said this before in other videos for, of cards I've made for them. Um, for whatever reason, we never see things, you know, in the places that sell little personalized keychains and different things. We never see anything in their name. We find tons of Victorias and other, and Josephines and those sorts of names and never my kids' names. So I have, I have fun customizing cards with their names using my um, alphabet dynamics and alphabet stamps. So I had 
covered everything, like made that whole sentiment panel. And then I backed that with the second um, stitched rectangle dynamics die cut, um, just so it had a nice smooth surface to it. And I didn't add anything to that. Um, I'm not planning on writing anything, but I'm using that. That's going to basically frame that cell phone um, that I had stamped. And then I had added all of the speech bubbles with foam tape. And then I'm getting onto the card. My idea was to create ba almost like basically a full sized shaker card, like as close to A2 as I could get. These die cuts aren't quite A2. I didn't want them to be the exact same as an A2 card. That's why I use die cuts rather than just cutting down cardstock. Plus the stitch edge just gives it a little something. And then I've got my little um, We Are page protector here in the fuse tool and I'd heated up the fuse tool. And I included all this footage, even though I actually end up redoing the pocket, but I ran the fuse tool along three edges and what I thought was sealed, but that's just it. I didn't actually let the heat tool heat up quite enough and I went a little too fast, but I don't realize this for a little bit and I didn't fully seal the edges and you're going to see why in a minute. So I sealed three edges and trimmed down the excess and then all these little extra die cuts that I die cut in the beginning, they're from the smartphone dynamics set. So there's little hearts and hashtags and different things. So I poured those into there and then I've got three different... Um, sets of sequins from the Doodlebug uh, pack. So I've got Swimming Pool, Beetle Black, and Bubblegum. And I'm pretty generous with them. I wanted to make this like a super shaker card. <laughs> so I just poured a bunch in there. And then because because it's never enough for me, especially with shaker cards, I could pretty much fill them right up. So I grabbed my Martha Stewart shaped glitter and used the iridescent hearts and dumped some of those in. And then, because I was just really curious to see how it would work, even though I, I kind of knew what the outcome would be, but I wanted to do it anyway, I have this really fun um, glitter, and it's by Stampendous, and it's kind of, it's chunky and fine, and I have this massive container of it, so I dumped a bunch in there, and I knew no matter what, it will, the glitter would come out no matter what, like, not all at once, but over time, because the fuse tool, just the way the tool is, it doesn't create a solid seal. It's kind of like a dot, 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 dot along the edges. So fine glitters are going to come out no matter what, which I knew, but I didn't really care because yeah, for a teenage girl who doesn't love glitter and mine especially does love glitter, she's coated in it 24 seven pretty much. So I did that, but that's, it was after that, that I started to notice just how bad the edges were on the original one. And I, I didn't include that part of the footage where I actually did try to salvage it. I went over it a couple times with the fuse tool, but it just, it kept getting worse and worse. And it was like the plastic was just melting. So instead I tried, um, just to experiment, I could have used the same brand of sheet protectors. It didn't matter. But I used um, one of my favorite things, stamp storage pockets, because I know they work good to you and I was just curious. So I did the process again. And this time I created the pocket a little bit larger because I wanted that originally just to give more space for things to shake around. And then I pulled out um, the cardstock that I die cut and decorated and stuck that back in the new pocket and then poured all that glitter and sequins into the new one. And even though I knew the glitter is going to come, you can see it, it's on my desk. It, it was everywhere, it was all over the house, all over me. <laughs> There's glitter and when you shake it, glitter still comes out the fine little tiny spaces between. So if you don't like glitter or you're sending this to, you know, to someone who you know would not appreciate something like that, like don't include the glitter, just leave it at the sequins and the little embellishments and that and you're good to go. And then the cell phone, I was able to peel it off the original because the adhesive hadn't fully dried yet because it was adhered to plastic, but I used Ranger's Multimedia Matte and coated it generously with that. And then once it's actually dry dry, like it's adhered really well. Um, this, I made this card last week right before my daughter's birthday and yeah, it's stuck together really, really well. So the inside panel there that I had coated with um, all those die cuts and her name and everything is just kind of free floating inside the shaker card but because there's so many sequins and everything else it doesn't really move around a whole lot but of course the sequins and the glitter and everything do and it's just super fun and sparkly so thank you all so much for watching and all the des the description box below the video will have um, the links to my blog post as well as links to all the supplies used all that sort of info so just check that out below if you're interested thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs up in my videos and i'll see you very soon in the next one bye